Hi creators, we're venturing into the exciting world of quilled jewelry today. Starting off with a basic square shape, I've got a strip of red, five millimeter wide paper, and cutting it into thirds. And using a slotted tool to roll it up, And then you want to do a controlled loosening so it opens up some, but the outside is still pretty thick. Glue it shut. And for reference, this coil is about two tenths of an inch wide. To shape it, squeeze opposite sides, then rotate and squeeze again, trying to get it right in the middle. I like to squeeze one more time to firm up the shape, and that is a quilling square. Next is a tight coil. Again, a five millimeter wide strip, this time using half a strip of dark red, like a burgundy color. Roll it up tight and as even as you can. Then glue shut. You can see the squares and the tight coils are close to the same size. Now we get to fancify the tight coils. I have some wire here that I pulled out from my crafting stash. It's thin and supple and I'm guessing it's 24 gauge. 24 or 26 gauge should work for this. And I'm gonna cut a six inch piece of wire. It's thin enough to cut with my scissors, but if you have wire cutters, I recommend using those instead. Smoothing out the wire with my fingers. I'm going to make a flat coil with one end of the wire. And to get the coil started, I thought I'd use my slotted tool. Just going around once. It makes a center kink, but otherwise it works pretty well. With this thin wire, I can roll it by hand. Just, uh, just want to make sure to squeeze the coil flat as you wrap it around. Okay, let's check it. I want it slightly smaller than my quilled tight coil, and that looks good. Using my normal quilling glue, uh, line up the two holes and hold it till they stick together. And then I'm gonna let it dry about 15 to 20 more minutes. Depends on your glue, I suppose. But once it's dry and it's not gonna move anywhere, you can take the loose end of the wire and wrap it around the paper coil. Tight and smooth, going around three times. Basically ending the wrapping even with where you started. Then the leftover wire will be rolled into another flat coil like we did on the other side. Needle nose pliers are handy for doing this too. Again, just make sure to squeeze the coil flat as you turn the wire. Line up the holes. And glue down.
It can take a while for it to stick, but you can clean up the stray glue and fix the wire spacing while you wait. Or if you have some small clamps, you can use those. Or maybe some chip clips could work in a pinch too. But anyway, there's our fancified wire wrapped quilled bead. Light, but sturdy, and very cool looking. Time to pick some spacer beads from this assortment I've got here. Got kind of thick, chunky ones, some tiny square ones, larger round ones. But I think I want to use these medium sized rounds. They're about the same diameter as my beads. And it has this nice bumpy texture as you look from the side. And most important, I have enough of them. <laughs> okay, we've got our wire wrapped beads, spacer beads, and square beads. Silver tiger tail jewelry wire, nylon coated. This is what I'll thread the beads onto. It's neat stuff. You know how regular wire will bend and stay that way? This tiger tail wire is very flexible, but it resists bending and kinking. So it gives your jewelry more strength, you know, stronger than string, but still has a nice hang to it. I'm going to cut a 10 inch piece. Again, use wire cutters if you have them. And that will get around my wrist with length to spare to make it easy to work with. Crimp beads from the craft store. Along with small jump rings. And a magnetic clasp. I'm going to use some needle nose pliers to twist open a jump ring. Slide it onto one end of the clasp and twist the jump ring closed. Then do the same thing on the other end so there's a jump ring on both sides. Take the tiger tail wire and slip on a crimp bead. Then thread the wire through one of the jump rings. And then back through the crimp bead. Slide the crimp bead up close to the jump ring and squish it closed. So here's some better footage showing it. I'm using the flat part near the top of my crimping tool. And you could just use pliers or tweezers if that's what you got. But it flattens the crimp bead, locking the wire in place. Now we're ready to put on the beads, yay! Starting with a spacer bead, we'll do a pattern of spacer, square, spacer, tight coil. Spacer, square, spacer, tight coil. I did have a few tight coils that were hard to put on. So I took something stiffer like a straight pin to clear a path and then I was able to slide it on. So I kept going with that pattern until it fit around my wrist and it ended up being 18 spacers, nine squares, and eight of those wire wrapped tight coils. Now before I forget, I need to trim the extra wire at the beginning. I'll keep some wire going through into a couple beads 
and then cut any of the extra as close to the bead as possible. And now it's hidden and there's no pokey part sticking out. Now we want to finish the bracelet in the same way we started. So thread the tiger tail through a crimp bead, then through the other jump ring, and back through the crimp bead, and continue on through a few beads beyond that. Now we're almost done, but we want to make sure to pull the wire tight so the beads are touching and there's no wire showing in between. Once it's tight, we can squish the crimp bead and cut the extra wire. And that's it. It's ready to wear. Warning, this is not waterproof. Not something to wear while you're washing dishes. And durability is yet to be determined. But I love how it turned out. It doesn't look childish. It's not large and clunky. And the different shades help it match with more reds. Like seriously, it goes with every single red top that I own. I'm very, very happy with it. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.